Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Urinary System. In this unit, we will focus on the urinary system. The objectives of this unit, Urinary System, are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce medical terms related to the urinary system. Describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the urinary system. Let's start our study of the urinary system with a look at the relevant anatomy. As you probably know, the primary function of the urinary system is to maintain the volume and levels of body fluids within normal limits. It does this in part by excreting waste. The urinary system, illustrated in the diagram, consists of two kidneys, two ureters, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. The kidneys are bean-shaped organs each about the size of your fist. They are located near the middle of the back, just below the rib cage. Inside each kidney, there are about a million tiny structures called nephrons, which filter blood. They remove waste products and extra water, which become urine. The urine flows through tubes called ureters. Urine goes through the ureters to the bladder which stores the urine until it is passed through the urethra. The urethra is a canal extending from the bladder to the outside of the body. The kidney has several important functions that include the elimination of organic waste, the regulation of homeostasis in the body, the regulation of the body's acid-base balance, the regulation of red blood cell production, and the regulation of blood pressure. The kidneys also have some influence over blood glucose and blood amino acids. In addition, they are instrumental in the elimination of toxic substances and they act as endocrine glands. It is important to remember that although the urinary system has a major role in excretion, there are other organs that assist in the excretion of waste products. Two good examples of this are the lungs, which serve to rid the body of carbon dioxide and water, and the skin, which excretes wastes through the sweat glands. A third example is the liver, which contains specialized cells that are important in the metabolism of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. The liver also contributes to the elimination of waste products that are produced through the metabolic processes. The bladder is a hollow organ in your lower abdomen that stores urine. Some of the common conditions that can affect bladder function are identified in this slide. Cystitis is an infection in the urinary bladder. Acute cystitis occurs when the lower urinary tract, the urethra and bladder, become infected by bacteria called E. coli, which are bacteria commonly found in the intestine. Cystitis is rare in men. Urinary tract infections, known as UTIs, are the second most common type of infection in the body. Symptoms include pain or burning when urinating, fever, tiredness or shakiness, urinary frequency or the urge to use the bathroom often, pressure in your lower belly, urine that smells bad or looks cloudy or reddish, and sometimes nausea or back pain. Treatments include medications. Urinary incontinence refers to the loss of bladder control. Interstitial cystitis is a chronic problem in which the bladder wall can become inflamed and irritated, leading to frequent painful urination. Diagnostic tests include urine tests, x-rays, and examination of the bladder wall with a device called a cystoscope. Treatment varies depending on the cause of the problem. It may include medications and, in severe cases, surgery. 
Bladder cancer occurs in the lining of the bladder. It is the sixth most common type of cancer in the U.S. There are several risk factors for developing bladder cancer. These include smoking, exposure to chemicals in the workplace, and a family history of bladder cancer. You are more likely to get bladder cancer if you are an older white male. Symptoms of bladder cancer include low back pain, blood in your urine, painful urination, and needing to frequently empty your bladder, which is called urinary frequency. Treatments for bladder cancer include surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and biological therapy. Biological therapies use the body's own immune system, either directly or indirectly, to fight cancer or to lessen the side effects that may be caused by some cancer treatments. A kidney stone is a solid piece of material that forms in the kidney from substances in the urine. It may be as small as a grain of sand or as large as a pearl. Most kidney stones pass out of the body without assistance from a physician. But sometimes medical intervention is necessary when the stone blocks the flow of urine and causes great pain. If you have a kidney stone, your symptoms might include extreme pain in your back or side that will not go away, blood in your urine, fever and chills, vomiting, urine that smells bad or looks cloudy, and burning when urinating. This condition is called nephrolithiasis. The diagnosis of a kidney stone can be assisted through the use of an intravenous pilogram, or IVP, which is an X-ray examination of the kidneys, ureters, and urinary bladder that uses contrast material injected into the veins. The treatment for kidney stones may involve lithotripsy, which is a medical procedure that uses shock waves to break up stones in the kidney, bladder, or ureter. After the procedure, the tiny pieces of stones can more easily pass out of your body in your urine. The most common type of lithotripsy is extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy, or ESWL. Extracorporeal means outside the body. High energy shock waves, also called sound waves, pass through the body until they hit the kidney stones and break them into smaller pieces. Kidney diseases are also referred to as renal diseases. As mentioned earlier, inside each kidney, there are tiny structures called nephrons, which filter blood and remove waste products and extra water. Damage to the nephrons results in kidney disease and may leave the kidneys unable to remove wastes. Usually, the damage occurs slowly over years. There are no obvious symptoms. Several conditions can cause kidney damage. You are at risk if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or if a close family member has kidney disease. The high blood glucose or blood sugar levels associated with diabetes can damage your kidneys over time. The kidneys act as filters that clean your blood. When they are damaged, the waste and fluids build up in the blood, and the body has no way to rid itself of the waste products. Kidney damage from diabetes is called diabetic nephropathy. An early sign is having small amounts of protein in the urine, which can be detected by a urine test. A blood test can also help determine how well the kidneys are functioning. Kidney failure is also called end-stage renal disease, ESRD, or renal failure. This condition occurs when your body cannot rid itself of harmful wastes, your blood pressure rises, the body retains excess fluids, and 
the body does not make enough red blood cells. Renal dialysis is the treatment for kidney failure. There are two main types of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Both types filter the blood to rid your body of harmful wastes, extra salt, and water. Hemodialysis requires a machine. Peritoneal dialysis uses the lining of your abdomen to filter your blood. Treatment for kidney failure also includes a kidney transplant. A transplant is an operation that places a healthy donor kidney into a patient. The transplanted kidney takes over the work of the two kidneys that have failed. During the transplant, the surgeon places the new kidney in your lower abdomen and connects the artery and vein of the donor kidney to your own artery and vein. Often, the new kidney will start making urine as soon as blood starts flowing through it, but sometimes it takes a few weeks to start working. Kidney transplants are one of the most common transplant operations in the United States. Only one donated kidney is needed to replace the work previously done by two. The donated kidney may be obtained from a living related donor, a living unrelated donor, or a deceased donor. Wilms tumor is a rare type of kidney cancer that affects children. It is also referred to as nephroblastoma. It causes a tumor on one or both kidneys. Having certain genetic conditions or birth defects can increase the risk of developing Wilms tumor. Children at risk should have follow-up examinations every three months. Symptoms of Wilms tumor include a lump in the abdomen and blood in the urine. The tumor is usually diagnosed and removed in surgery. Other treatments include chemotherapy, radiation, biological therapy, or a combination. Most children with Wilms tumors can be cured. Kidney cancer is also referred to as renal cancer. Kidney cancer forms in the lining of the tiny tubes inside your kidneys. It happens most often in people over 40. Risk factors include being over 40 years old, having certain genetic conditions, and misusing pain medicine. Symptoms include blood in your urine, a lump in your abdomen, unexplained weight loss, pain in your side, and loss of appetite. Treatment depends on your age, your overall health, and how advanced the cancer is. It could include surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or biological therapy. Here are some key word parts for the urinary system, along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and to become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. See if you can put your new knowledge of the urinary system to work in solving a mystery.
an elderly white male presented to his family practitioner complaining of blood in his urine. After evaluation and testing, he was diagnosed with bladder cancer. What are the therapies or treatments the family practitioner should discuss with the patient? Did you guess surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and biological therapy? Bladder cancer occurs in the lining of the bladder. It is the sixth most common type of cancer in the U.S. Do you remember the risk factors for bladder cancer? You should know that smoking is a major risk factor for bladder cancer, as is exposure to chemicals in the workplace. In addition, a family history of bladder cancer puts you at a greater risk for bladder cancer. And older white males get bladder cancer more frequently than other groups. Treatments for bladder cancer include surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and biological therapy. Biological therapies use the body's immune system, either directly or indirectly, to fight cancer or to lessen the side effects that may be caused by some cancer treatments. This concludes the urinary system. In summary, we defined, explained, and correctly pronounced medical terms related to the urinary system. We also described common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the urinary system.